without further ado, hello and welcome back to episode 6, episode 6 of Film Focus, a weekly independent movie review show where we're looking through two very, very different films this episode. Yeah, they are uh, different. Incredibly different films. Um, and it's all down to my stupid curiosity. I hold my hand up to it. Sorry, I'm Anthony Squire. Oh, yeah, and I'm Fred Black. Fred Black's stupid curiosity got the better of me. Yeah, the human centipede yeah. two. We start, that's how we start yes. off this week, with the human centipede two. And we should probably warn you before we go into the review that we are going to spoil it and talk about stuff that does happen in the film. I mean, I, can't, I don't think we can it, review it without talking about the stuff that happens in the film. You, yeah, it... Because... It, my, my word of advice to you would be, do not get this film. Don't. All right, I'm not just, that's not some way of hyping it up, because really, I'm not... I'll be, I'll be straight up, I gave it a zero out of ten. I, mean, I only gave it a one. I gave it one singular point out of ten, because the lead guy in it, the actual main character, if you can call him a character, really. He doesn't say anything throughout the entire no. film. He's... He's got, he was good at being creepy. Brilliant, but... Brilliantly creepy in it. Um, but then it might just have been the general atmosphere of the film, of you know the tone and just the events that happened in the film. It was it might have just helped to his character, but he definitely stood out for me as the one good thing about this film because the rest of the film is... Really messed up. <laughs> it's fucking in shocking, short, really. In short, you've got this messed up guy who's inspired by the events of the first Human Centipede film. And you can see where he, he's watching it again and again in the film. And there's one no, yeah, horrible scene where he's... Um, I wouldn't hope you're not eating. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you probably should have put down all food. He's not go near it for an hour. masturbating... With sandpaper. Yeah, over the first... Over the, wo over the woman in the first film. It's specifically the woman in the mi who survives the first film. I don't know if you've, you've seen the first film, but it's yeah. the woman who is in the middle of the first film. And, uh, yeah, he's a bit of a good time to himself with some sandpaper, essentially. But this, the, the film is just him being inspired by the first one to uh, make his own human centipede. And he has, like, a scrapbook of all the images and, like, you know, detailed drawings yeah. of how to make it. And he's not a doctor, unfortunately. No, because... He's not a doctor, so well, the way he does it is just by getting loads of DIY tools and essentially just clubbing a load of people unconscious with a crowbar to get them into this warehouse. That was just one thing to me that didn't make sense. He leaves them in the warehouse on their own. They could have, I reckon those people could have easily escaped. They probably could have. I mean, I, I, it, it, it does defy belief that not one of them would have at least tried to wriggle free from duct tape, and that's yeah, all that's holding them together. Run over to another someone else. They yeah, helped each other out. They could have helped each other out, yeah. I mean, he leaves them alone for long enough. This film, it's almost like, it's the same director, uh, Tom, is it Tom Six? Tom Six, yes. And I think the first one, he was just testing the grounds. This yes. one, he went way too far. He went to an extreme and... He went so over the top with all the violence, the just just everything, really. I, mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it, it really. It was... I mean, I felt, I did feel physically sick during this film. For some of it, it's, I mean, it's yeah. when you've got when you've got stuff like, especially you know when he's doing all the surgery, <laughs> and he does it with kitchen and anyway he's like putting them all together. He uses like kitchen knives and staple guns and duct tape, and you know you have all these graphic detail. And it's you know obvious that it's not you know they're not using like. They all use props and everything, so it's not, you know, yeah. not, not some sort of snuff film or something. <laughs> it's a little better than a snuff film. <laughs> but it's just horrible to watch, and I felt myself kind of just going, duh, duh, not physically unable to watch it, because it was just so gruesome. It was just so over the top. It was being violent just for the sake of it, and the unnecessary stuff that happened as well. I mean, you had the, the, the pregnant woman... Yeah, the scene in the somehow car. I mean, somehow she dies, uh, probably just by like you know starvation or you know just being you know in unsanitary conditions or whatever. But she dies, somehow wakes up again, heart like half an hour later, and gives birth oh, in yeah, a car. Yeah, and yeah, it as much detail as much bloody gory detail as you can imagine is just how it happens and. 
Uh, my jaw just literally boom, <laughs> like straight through to the basement of my flat. I was watching it. And I was just like, "Fucking hell, this is messed up." Yeah, I mean, it tried. To, I think they were trying to justify this guy being messed up by dropping hints that he was sexually abused as a child. He was sexually but... abused by his father and his psychiatrist, oh, who he saw was kind of doing the thing. same thing. Yeah, yeah, fancied him, fancied to do the same oh. thing. Um, and his mother was also a bit of a dick as well because there's that bit where he's they're, they're eating dinner and that guy starts playing loud techno music on the flat above them and she bangs the ceiling yeah. to get him to stop the guy comes down into their somehow really easily just gains access to their flat um as you do. and she just points at you know she just points at her son and just goes it was him he did it um oh god it was so this but, film it I'm just repeating myself now, but it was just so messed up. It really was it just took horrific. It to an extreme. I think this director, Tom Six, I think he's got some real issues. <laughs> I think he needs professional help. He probably does. He needs many years of therapy. He took the story and he just made it insanely violent for the sake of it. Oh, you know, just... when people remember this film, we're not going to think, oh, you had a decent story or a funny moment. No, the funny moment, what am I saying? But um, <laughs> okay, no. it was their com- they were great comedy in the Human yeah. Centipede too. I tell you. But, but I then, remember the bits, just the really violent and insanely OTT. Yeah, I mean, it's it just. I mean, this film has so much controversy when it first came out. I mean, it was banned in the US. I'm surprised. Like, like when it first came out, it was banned in the United States. It was banned here in the UK and. I think Australia were kind of daring enough to release it, just uncut in cinemas. But then I've heard some things on IMDb message boards that they did get a cut version eventually in cinemas and people because people complained or something. Um, yeah, it... I think we saw the uncut version because I was trying to figure out whilst I was like just before I watched the film whether we had got the uncut, version. The uncut or the cut version on DVD. Mm. We got the uncut version, as far as I can tell. Weren't we because, lucky? <laughs> were we that? Because as far as I can tell, the scenes that were cut from the cinema release were the masturbation scene that we've already talked about. Yeah. Uh, apparently there is a scene where he kills a baby, or he kills a child, <laughs> which I don't remember in the film. But that no, might I... just be the child, that, the, the giving birth scene that we've already talked about. And the oh, child might... didn't get away. Well, she does get away, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, but if, if she's going to be killed the child, then she wouldn't have gotten away. Yeah, but... It's oh, just... I'm really glad we didn't watch that version. Well, but then there's also the rape scene in it. That was apparently cut. Mm. And we saw that in all its gruesome detail. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> just all, you're just, like, mourning for the characters of the film. Like, oh, just... my God, it's so horrible! <laughs> I, was I mean, just actors, a... actresses who are in this film, why? You can't be that desperate for cash, can you? Oh well, I, interesting enough, I watched the making of. There's a making of on it, mm. and uh, there's this. There's a bit in the making of. It's only like ten minutes long, and there's this guy bent over, like lit on the floor, assuming the position, if you were. Yeah. Uh, and he and he's looking to the camera. He's just going, "My mum, my mum always said I'd make it in cinema, and here I am." <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. But the thing is, though, what a guy. you take a walk around the set, as they do in the making of, and they all seem to be having a complete blast with it. So they all seem to be having a load of fun. But I suppose behind the camera, I it's a little bit more... Behind the camera, you mean... It'd yeah, be different. I mean, it'd be a lot different, because you can see all the, like, you know, special effects, you know, being made, and, you know... Oh, it's just horrible. If I've learned anything this past week is, whatever curiosity says to you about a film... Oh god, yeah. You should just be solid looking at me because I picked this out. Out of the entire new releases section of Blockbusters, mm. there were tons of films I could have gone for, and I picked and Human Centipede one. 2, and I really, really regret it now. I mean, I gave it the one point for that actor in it. Um, I, I gave it zero. Zero. Uh, it's just, I don't blame you for that, actually. If I, had it not, had it been someone else and like didn't do it justice, yeah. I think it would have just got straight zero for me. And for a long time, I was thinking giving it a zero. But yeah, the human centipede just... And you told me earlier there's a third one in the process. There is a... <laughs> Tom Six came out with a statement. After the second one caused so much contro- contro- controversy, he said he's going to make a third one. He always planned to make it a trilogy, apparently. And he said he's going to make number two look like a Disney film. Um, which <laughs> It's just... 
unbelievable in the extreme. <laughs> he just wants attention, doesn't he? he That's does. what this is all about. So he can get what? He, he wasn't get... loved by his mother. <laughs> he can go down in, in film history as making the most extreme film. I don't um, know if he, that is, but... In our eyes, it certainly is at the moment. It's yeah. one of the most extreme film I've I, ever watched. Like I said earlier, I think, I think he needs professional help. <laughs> I think we should leave this film yeah. as it is. Moving um, on. We, we can hopefully f take it out of our minds yeah. and uh, move on with our lives. And we move on to our trailers for the week, starting with a little Chinese action Let the bullets film fly. called Let the Bullets Fly. Oh, the intro to this trailer was brilliant. You had a sniper. Train, you can see a train in the background. One bullet and the whole train just comes off the rails. <laughs> I hope he used more than one bullet, because otherwise this film could just be like, you know ridiculously implausible. I mean, not that it already isn't, with, like, streets yeah. lined with bullets oh, and yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah, the train pretty much does a 360 flip into a lake. <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, yeah, it does, it's got Chow Yun-Fat, who's, like, this kung fu legend and, like, Hong Kong star, and it looks really funny. It looks... The evil like, arts were brilliant. Oh, the evil arts, yeah. I mean, you've got just this kind of tale of, like, corruption and, you know... Just general bribery and all all interspersed with a good dose of gunfire. <laughs> yeah, slow motion sequences. Yeah, slow motion. The, like the classic, like, is it lethal weapon? Like sideways diving through yeah. through a door, <laughs> guns firing, and he's just like Yeah, this this film just like ticks every single box for a stupid yeah. Saturday night action film. I'm looking forward to this one. Mm. Uh, it's gonna be a definitely in interesting Time. You think you get a few beers and you'll definitely have fun with your guy. Oh, fun yeah. with this film. Uh, I don't think you'd even need that, maybe. No, you, don't, you, you wouldn't need beers to enjoy this film. It just looked like good fun, OTT, but in the right way. Mm. Yeah. The next trailer we got is the latest uh, second trailer for The Amazing Spider Man, which is the reboot of the Sam Raimi's fa failed series, essentially. Well, Spider Man 1 and 2 were good. As we've said before, number 3. Pile of crap. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, real that wasn't pile of crap. Um, I mean, the musical number in the middle was just, you know, his emo musical thing is just atrocious. And uh, oh, he's walking down the street, going, yeah, just a, with this qu quirky smile on his face, his slicked hair, and just going, mm, yeah, I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> this one, it, the lizard will be the bad guy. It and the effect they they haven't they haven't don't seem to have taken like anything to like dose him up in a costume. No. The lizard doesn't seem to have any fancy costume. He just seems to be a big, mad, fucking rage machine. I'm kind of hoping it's a back to basic. Mm. I mean, from it, back to basics, maybe action, maybe drama. Mm. There looks to be a lot more drama in it as well, with him kind of having this hidden past, aka like Born style. I mean, we got like yeah. the Born trailer coming up soon for the next episode, but um, yeah, I, I'm in, I'm interested for this film and. I'll watch it when it comes yeah. out. It it looks good. I, it's going to be a hit or miss. So the guy actually plays it rather well, though. I think he mm. some of the lines the guy had as Spider Man. I think it's Aaron Johnson or someone. Yeah. Um, he definitely knows how to like. It, he seemed more like Peter Parker than anyone at, than Toby Tobey Maguire. Maguire. Yeah, he seemed more kind of you know the geeky school geeky, kid. Yeah, geeky yeah. school kid. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, um, yeah, it's all good. To wait to see have to wait to, we'll have to wait to see with any film, but for big big franchises like Spider Man, you could go so horribly wrong. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, we'll, 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 leave, we'll, we'll leave number three. Um, the next trailer is one called Break. Now, this one basically the trailer is about this guy trapped in the boot of a car where it's sort of Saw style, people are trying to get information out of him, he refuses. And then just bizarre things start happening. I mean, was it the bees? The yeah, bees come into his like little enclosure, yeah. Uh, and they're trying to get him to fig to tell them the roulette place, isn't it? The place where the president and everyone, the president and all the high-ranking members of the U.S. government go in a time of a crisis, and he just won't tell them. Um, no matter how many people seem to die, which makes him <laughs> yes, I'm yeah, doing my job, but all these innocent people will die. <laughs> tell us what we want to know. Oh, we'll kill them. Mm. I can't do that. Mm. That's exactly a line from the trailer, though, isn't it? He's like, I can't do that. I can't tell you. I can't tell you these things. <laughs> you don't. You are not worthy. <laughs> God bless the president. Oh yeah, good. Um, but yeah, this looks interesting. I mean, it's got Stephen Dorff, 
who's uh, the bad guy from Blade. Mm. It's the only thing I've seen him in, actually. Um, and it looks like a cross between Buried and Saw. Yeah. Both of which are really good films. Um, uh, I just hope they don't, don't do the same sort of twist that's in a Saw film. Yeah, I just... And I, I hope they... like I said, Yeah, similar lines to that. I hope they end it well. I hope they just don't, you know... Everyone smiles to the camera. Yeah, so it's like, we saved the day! Ah, crap. <laughs> it's like they end it like that. That would just be really annoying and I wouldn't like it. It would just ruin the whole film. I really. find it funny, actually, if it ended with him getting an award from the president. <laughs> <laughs> well done, son! <laughs> you know, that's probably how it's going to happen. That's probably how the film is going to end. You've just predicted the end of Break. Um, oh, God. If that is actually how it ends, we are going to be spot on the moment. <laughs> we should get some sort of, like, you know, cash prize for that. <laughs> Guess the end of a film, get a cash prize. It, it just looked a bit formulaic. It, yeah, it was Saw and um, what was the other film? Buried. Buried. Which you haven't seen, which oh, I'm surprised because that's a corker of a film. That's an absolute absolute movie. Uh, well, it's only got Ryan Reynolds in it, like Green Lantern, the guy who played the Green oh, yeah. Lantern, yeah. He's in it, for, and it's just him for the entire film, so kind of B movie style, but dude, is it tense? <laughs> it's fucking tense, man. Uh, and this brings it? us on to all that tenseness, this brings us on to the next trailer Unicorn <laughs> City. That's the like least least descriptive word for this film. Unicorn City is um this, again another brilliant intro to the trailer. Some guy's sword just sets on fire and he turns to the camera oh. going, Oh Yeah, just belting your opera. <laughs> it's brilliant. Uh yeah, it's set it's like this guy who has like no job and he's like one of these like Dungeons and Dragons kind of geeks, like role playing fantasy games. They essentially go out to the middle of nowhere and start their own kind of fantasy role-playing city yeah. called Unicorn City. It looks hilarious. Yeah, it looks utterly hilarious. The background music was... Oh, I know trailers can be, can be misleading, but, I'm, but yeah. I generally want to see this one. Yeah, it was like... I described it to you as like the last like half an hour from Role Models. If anyone's seen Role Models with like Sean William Scott and Paul Rudd, they have this kid in it who's obsessed with all that sort of role-playing stuff. Yeah. Um, and it is exact, and it looks like a film made out of people like that kid, <laughs> um, which, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, the film just looks so funny. Um, and yeah. we, were la- we were laughing, and it, it's just so oddball. I know it's, it's such an oddball thing. film. It didn't look formulaic. It's again have to wait and see till it comes out. Well, yeah, but definitely one of the better trailers we've seen oh, this yeah. week. Definitely, and we've watched a lot of them. <laughs> we had like. I don't know, like 18, 19 trailers this week or something. It, it wasn't us. really that tough choosing which No, it to wasn't watch. that tough. I mean, we, ha- we spent like a good hour watching trailers this week as well. And it wasn't that tough to choose them, like you said. Um, you know, just some really bad films being made at the moment, obviously. <laughs> Putting that to one side, that brings us on to the last trailer. Oh, the, yeah, I, I the actually asked... Black Rainbow. Yeah, I actually asked to watch, to review this one. I put this one in the show because it looks so fucking it weird. It just looks really alternative and out there. I mean, mm. it, she it wasn't re- in a prison, was she? She was... No, the film, it, it's, it looks like she's some sort of scientific test subject. Yeah. Um, with some sort of mind-altering drugs or behaviour drugs. The film it most reminded me of was 2001, A Space Odyssey. Simply for like the the kind of bleak style and its its look, all the kind of shiny futuristic panels and bright lights and all that, mm. it looked a bit kind of two thousand one, um, but just with a huge dose of weirdness thrown in. <laughs> I, I just... wanted to see this one just out of curiosity mm. because it was it was a good trailer. It didn't give too much away. Away, it just it was just really there were lots of seemingly random images flung in there. Yeah, just where like you know she takes a drink or something, and suddenly, yeah, everything's moving around, and she's climbing up the side of the building. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, "What's going on now? I don't know." I get a little freaked out in the trailer. He was like, "Oh my god, what's, what's all this about?" <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely looked a um, an interesting little film. Definitely, yeah, I'd like to see it when it comes out. Yeah, me too. Um, but that's our trailers done for this week. Uh, most of them, I think, actually, yeah. All of them were found on Apple.com this week. All yeah. those five, anyway. I mean, Empire did have the Spider-Man one first, but mm. Apple 
brought out a few days later. Uh, so yeah, apple.com slash trailers for all those trailers we've just seen. And we move on to our next film, which is an incredibly different turn from The Human Centipede. It's called Crazy Stupid Love. Um, which we've had like two weeks of a row of rom-coms. Mm. I'm not sure this one was actually that good. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> you're, just, you're, doing, you're slamming your hand. It wasn't good, Fred. <laughs> Don't even think it was acceptable. Basically, a couple, uh, they break up. Some guy, he, he's just pining over his wife. Then another man shows him how to become a hot shot with the women. He, he got well, he gets off with, he go. I'll start again. <laughs> no, you're you're on the right lines. He gets off with a, he gets a, a couple of women, uh, uh, women, and suddenly realizes that he, he has know, potential. He realizes that you know, obviously in true romantic style, that the person he is, you know, he has broken up with is meant to be, and tries to get back with her. And yeah, that's pretty much a plot film. Um, <laughs> the pace of the film, it was all right. It dragged in parts. Mm. It was good in parts. The comedy was a bit. A little too predictable, I found it. Some of it was. I mean, the stuff with Ro- um, oh, was it Ryan Gosling, mm. who we, who was in Drive last week, and oh, last with a week before, I can't remember. Uh, uh, he was very funny, and the kind of interaction between him and him and Steve Carell. Yeah, it's a good contrast. It's a good contrast, and um, just the just the parts where Ryan Gosling just kept slapping him, <laughs> just yeah. like three times in a row, just going snap out of it, snap out of it. I was like, he'd say, "Yeah, my wife used to," and then he'd go, Psh. "Yeah, stop talking about your wife." But 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 she, <laughs> um, yeah, Ryan Gosling again. He just looked super fucking cool mm. throughout this entire film, but he was meant to. Yeah, um, the suits fitted him well. Oh yeah, he and you know this is entirely his character. He he, he dresses snap. He gets any woman he wants. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole subplot with his character, which is predictable enough as well. But you know, it was it, expected, isn't it? Like I said, the comedy a little bit too predictable. The whole film was a bit too predictable. It's it, it wasn't as good as Friends with Benefits. No, no, we knew as good as Friends no. With Benefits. I mean, Friends with Benefits was genuinely funny, right. uh, and it what you know. Not that this film went like over the top or like across a line with its humour. It wasn't crude yeah. in any way. It didn't cross the line. It was just too. Well, I'm saying it again, predictable. It was a little creepy as well with the babysitter. If anyone's seen oh, it, and the babysitter, yeah. she, um, the way that whole subplot pans out because everyone basically fancies each other. Yeah, and I think we shouldn't really reveal much more than that. But the whole plot with the babysitter. How that pans out is just a tiny bit creepy and unsettling. I'm just like, it doesn't really fit into the whole comedy thing. And yeah, to be honest, if they left it out, it would have been a much better film. <laughs> yeah, they did. They didn't cross the line with that, but it wasn't that far. Off. Yeah, it wasn't that far off. Um, but then you got you got the performances in it. You got Steve Carell puts in a good performance. Julianne Moore as the wife. To be honest, I thought that was average it? performances. No one really went. Out of their way. No, I, I, you have um, I mean, Ryan Gosling obviously just playing it cool. Um, I don't know. I, I just, again, I'm struggling for things to say about this film. There's not a lot really to say. I'm looking over to my notes to kind of. Um, okay. I mean, it's just it's another. I've got my first line of this of my on my notes is that it's another rom com. Yay! <laughs> I just got in short. A marriage falls apart. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, well, you can probably guess the end of the film, can't you? Um, yeah. the, I think the best part for me is uh, the the the, fam- the greet the meet up at the end, <coughs> where they all kind of meet up as one, and um, have that little kind of like duke out there. For not, it's essentially the final sequence of the film where they all have this kind of big confrontation with everything that's gone on, and there are some really funny bits in there. Yeah, but it doesn't save the rest of the film. It doesn't, no. Uh, I mean, I gave it a five. I gave it a five as well. Yeah, we agree on something. Shocking behaviour. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've agreed on both films pretty much this week, haven't we? Um, yeah, next time you see a horror. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we'll need a lot of this. I love how you look at it drink, so we'll just need oh, another one of these, please, Jeeves. <laughs> no, I'd say Crazy Stupid Love is, well, I think it's worth watching at least once. Definitely, yes. Um, I wouldn't buy it, though. No, no. I mean, you know, you've got all this. All the all, there's so many romantic comedies released nowadays. It's hard to pick out, like you know, what is actually a good film. And this got some which they're like um. They I know they have to be predictable. Some do it well. Some don't do it well. 
Well, they're always... I think it's one of those genres that if someone goes in expecting to watch a romantic comedy, on some level you are expecting it to be predictable. Yeah, but at the same time... <laughs> at the same time, not just a carbon copy of everything else. No, this is true. And it, it does follow some carbon copies. It, it does, you know, become just a carbon copy, doesn't it? And... I mean, like I said, I enjoyed watching it. I mean, it was a welcome antidote after <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the if, other one. If, if, if for some reason you watch a film like The Human Centipede or someone else <laughs> gets you to watch a film like that... Shut up, a, man! I'm sorry! I said I'm sorry all it's week. It's kind of film... <laughs> yeah, it, it's a good, like you said, antidote. Uh, and I said I was sorry all <laughs> week. <laughs> Immediately after, I, I I didn't even get halfway through the human sense. I watched it first. Yeah, you watched it. But you I were, sent you the text saying it's pretty screwed up. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like an hour and a half. Well, it's only an hour and a half long. It's so about f- halfway through the human centipede. I sent you a text just going, "I am so sorry <laughs> for making you watch this film." <laughs> I just had to like grovel and apologize. Like, no, please keep doing the show. <laughs> No, I didn't really grovel. Um, no, I didn't. No, it would have. It probably should have come to that though. It was just such a terrible film. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, Crazy Stupid Love. Crazy Stupid Love. I'd say it's worth watching at least once. A bit too predictable, but yeah. it is still funny in parts. Yeah, it's not. It's not the best rom com you're ever going to see, but you know, it's passable entertainment for you know, quick, a quick romantic, quick romantic comedy you want to watch. That's all good. Yeah. Uh, can't really say much more about it. And that brings us to the end of the show. Yeah, it brings us to the end of our little, of part one here. So we will see you tomorrow for part two, won't we? Yeah. Yeah. See you later, guys. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.